Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today, uh, well, you've probably seen the thumbnail. I'm going to be talking about Cathay, so why why is this here that says, uh, if I'm pointing the right way? I, there. There we go. Why? No, point the wrong way. I'm all mirrored. It's very confusing. Altdorf, Crown of the Empire. Wrong Empire, mate. We're talking about Cathay. Well, yeah, kind of. So this book is part of uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, currently being published by... Uh, uh, Cubicle 7, fantastic company, they've been doing a great job with this edition. The amount of lore and just amazing detail they've gone into with just everything is incredible. Like, huge props to these guys. And uh, they've actually, as far as I can tell, this thing I'm about to show you is the most recent um, officially licensed Games Workshop thing with any news of Cathay in it. Well, like, specifically, you know, not a... I, I, I think there's probably something in White Dwarf talking about it for Total War Warhammer 3, but something outside of Total War Warhammer 3 news, uh, or indeed even the old world, this is the most recent, like, we have a book already, there is something on Cathay. It is a single page. It is a single page speaking about a single character, which, because this is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, these aren't sort of main characters that we, we'll see necessarily. Uh, represented anyway, uh, sort of anywhere, but we also might, because they have drawn upon uh, second edition a heck of a lot for, uh, that's Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay second edition, a lot for Total War Warhammer. Um, they've, they've brought in sort of, you know, references using like followers and different things like that. There's a lot of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay uh, references, so they're certainly willing to use that sort of expanded universe um, outside of just the army books, you know, to flesh out the world, which rightly so, because the roleplay stuff fleshes out the world. The Warhammer Fantasy Battle stuff fleshes out the battles, you know? That's always the case. And so to draw upon that stuff for the world building makes a lot of sense. And so here we actually have a character um, who is uh, the Lady of the Commandery, Yabo Chow, Weijin's Venerable Ambassador. If that's confusing, her name is Yabo Chow, and uh, she's from Weijin, who we know is the, well, who we know? That we know is the capital of Grand Cathay, that's the seat of the Dragon Emperor. So, as any proud Altdorfer can tell you, the Empire is the greatest nation in the Old World, with a history stretching back more than 2,500 years. Citizens of Altdorf find it hard to imagine the existence of a civilization more storied and stable than their own. But far to the east is a nation many times larger than the Empire, which had developed sophisticated government and military might before the uh, Umborigans, or Umborigans, that's the tribe of Sigmar, by the way, um, so much as set foot in the Reichland, Celestial and Imperial Grand Cathay. So there is a great geographical and cultural gulf between the two nations, and they do not have a great deal to do with one another. Between the Empire and Cathay lie the volcanic Darklands. Between the Empire and Cathay... Uh, sorry, I'm about to do the same line again. Uh, between the Empire and Cathay lie the volcanic, uh, volcanic Darklands, home to the Chaos Dwarfs and the Mountains of Morn which uh, has got an E on the end now. I don't think it always has an E. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, could be a typo, though. This is a PDF copy that before the published book. I did say it was published, didn't I? I don't have the book yet. It's being shipped at the moment. Anyway, um, within uh, which the ogres carve out their many bellicose kingdoms, nevertheless, there are links between the Empire and Cathay. They trade luxury goods and raw materials with each other and share information that might be of use in the development of magical techniques and monitoring chaos incursions. Diplomatic convoys from Cathay often reside at the Imperial Palace in Altdorf, whilst Karl Franz's ambassadors are invited to launch in the Golden Pagodas of Weijin. In the wake of the Great Fog riots, the presiding Cathayan ambassador was unmasked as a follower of Zinch. <gasps> oh no. They do have a bit of a history with Zinch. So, and fled with the waiting pyres of the witch hunters of the Order of the Silver Hammer. Outraged missives from Altdorf were met by cutting recriminations from Weijin. Sigmarite slated Cathayan efforts to root out chaos as lacking zeal, whilst the Dragon Emperor's mandarins retorted that their uh, occidental counterparts must be grossly myopic not to have spotted such an obvious imposter. The current ambassador to Altdorf is working hard to smooth over these differences. She's a lady of the commandery, Yabo Chow, venerated envoy of the Dragon Emperor. Chow is a skilled and accomplished diplomat with detailed knowledge of the history and culture of Weijin and Altdorf. She is a patient and cool-headed communicator and is, uh, is gaining a reputation for withstanding the most furious tirades of Sigmarite zealot combustor. 
before calmly tearing his argument to shreds. Negotiating trade deals with her has become a pleasant form of humiliation for Altdorf's merchants. Her logic is ruthless and her contracts waterproof. But her manners are so impeccable that to be bamboozled by her is somehow rather charming. Her honor guard, a regiment of celestial dragon monks. Unit confirmed, maybe? Huh? Celestial dragon monks? Sounds pretty cool. Uh, have also won renown, campaigning against the beastmen and forest goblins who infest the Reichland, with the same devastating effect as squadrons drawn from Altdorf's knightly orders. Behind her back, a number of lurid conspiracies are being spread about Chow. Folk say that she is partially immortal, having feasted in her youth on the flesh of divine peaches and turning into the wind of Gyron. Uh, uh, as, uh, there. So as to age only one day every year. Sorry, the font is very, very small to have it display properly for you guys. I could have just edited it in, but I'm lazy. So, um, so this is interesting because obviously you've got the the uh, divine peaches. You got the the what's it called? Is the the peach garden pact or something? Is it was the pact um, in the Three Kingdoms where where Liu Bei, um, Guan Yu, and uh, uh, Zhang Fei uh, sort of agreed to be brothers. You know, in a right you know righteous cause um, to to make the Han Empire great again. Um, so yeah, the whole Peach Garden reference is really fun. I like that. But also, the Wind of Gyron. So the Wind of Gyron, I think, is very important um, to consider when we're talking about Cathay, because a lot of immortality, so the Wind of Life, is very important. That is Gyron. It's another, another name for the Wind of Magic, dedicated to the Wind of Life. So um, Gyron's very important with all the immortality running around. But also, in Warhammer, different materials hold, uh, or well, channel, um, and sort of mirror properties from different winds of magic. So, uh, bright order wizards, you know, fire wizards, bright wizards, as it were, they all have rubies, right? Sort of on their pommels of their swords and things to help them focus their magic. Whereas for Gaidlin, it's uh, 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 jade. So, you know, green gem, jade. And jade, we know, has always been a material associated with the emperors of China. And in Cathay, it seems to be the same. It does seem to be the same thing. It's sort of has the whole immortality bent, of course, that uh, Gyron, you know, that makes sense. Sort of keep you alive by channeling that. It certainly makes sense for this woman, um, if that is indeed what she's doing. But I think that's a really fun thing, um, the idea that that's that sort of um, parallel um, between the different sort of real life and, and, and Warhammer. I think that's really fun. So I think that's really cool. So I can't wait to see whatever sort of things exist because we have seen some contraption that is glowing green and presumably is something to do with Gyron uh, or channeling the power of the Emperor, perhaps. You know, it's mirroring the magic that they have felt in the uh, from the Emperor, you know, from the Dragon Emperor, that is, not Karl. Um, so, you know, there's some cool stuff going on here, which I can't wait to hear more details about. But uh, there's more hints in just these little things. There's more hints here, even though this is going out of its way to be vague, um, because this is really early in the development of Cathay, you know, to have this sort of uh, reference here. And we'll see how they've kept it vague. So, they say she is a prodigal seer, that she wears the skulls of three accursed langurs, whose heads she pinched off with her fingers, that the dragons embroidered into her silks shift about when no one is watching, and that she achieved her position as Lady of the Commandery through the pitiless elimination of all who might rival her. Chow, uh, diminishes such talk as slander, but is also the originator of these rumours, believing that it never hurts to cultivate a reputation as being a little more than merely human. I love that. Tricking a bunch of silly, silly foreigners into thinking that you're all, you know, mystical and everything. I think that's really fun. So although uh, Warhammer is playing on the sort of the mystical um, stuff from, you know, sort of... Um, you know, Buddhist and Chinese and Confucian, all that stuff, you know, all that interesting sort of Eastern mysticism. Um, it's doing it in a way that is uh, the the, <laughs> the Eastern people within that universe know what the rest of the world thinks of them, that they're all a bunch of mystics, so they're playing on it, which I think is really fun. Um, I think that's a really good way to sort of bridge that between, is this a bit cheesy or like, you know, at worst a bit racist? doesn't matter it's the it's the these eastern 
you know, this powerful Eastern nation are totally playing on those stereotypes for their own advantage. And I think that's really fun. I think that's really good. It's a really good way to have that in-universe, like, daftness about it. But there's still dragons and magic and stuff, so, I mean, who can really say how silly it is? But uh, I think it's really fun. So, uh, Chow has a long-term goal. An ulterior motive to which she is quietly but utterly committed. The Dragon Emperor would uh, clearly love to turn a campaign of defence against marauder tribes into a conquest of lands beyond Cathay's northern border. However, he must also station troops along his western frontier to guard against raids from the mountains of Morn. So this is really fun because we've seen previously, uh, we've, we've already seen that basically the two legendary lords that we have, one represents the north, um, and defends the Bastion, while the other one uh, is, is sort of in charge of the West, um, making sure that they're defending against uh, sort of the Ogre Kingdoms and such. So they have those two places represented, and already in this book, we are seeing that there are plans for expansion, which might hint at that. Which, again, how cool is that? It all ties together, perhaps by accident, perhaps totally intentioned. Who can say? But I think it's really cool. Um, and again, just more excuses for war and such. And, um, you know, just world events taking place in the in the you know the the tabletop um, you know the RPG so you know just good to have that political intrigue going on I love it so many of his mandarins are of the opinion that the only way to do this is to subjugate the ogre kingdoms this is a controversial proposition for whilst ogres do pillage unprotected settlements they also trade with Cathay and provide a service as bodyguards and mercenaries so really cool stuff really cool. Um, I think it hints at so many different things, and it ties into all the other stuff we know about Cathay already. But the fact that this is such a modern um, uh, uh, piece of writing, you know, officially licensed, you know, it, it's it's great to see something like that already cropping up in media um, outside of, of Total War Warhammer. So we are seeing, you know, more of the world being fleshed out. Even if it's just one character, just a write-up on one character, has to bring in a lot of backstory and rumour and speculation. But the fact that she is the one putting in this rumour, is Gyron the source of immortality? Or is it just, you know, dragons be like that? I don't know. Um, who knows? Is this just language that that uh, only the Empire can, can really understand? And for our frame of reference, we really are essentially like a member of the Empire sort of considering what Cathay might be like at the moment because all we have so far is a bunch of rumour or half-truths or, you know, vague descriptions of things. We haven't seen the nitty-gritty of everything. So we are very much like uh, the members of court negotiating with uh, with Yabo Chow, trying to figure out what is true and what isn't and what is the extent of this uh, mysticism and magic and everything else, which uh, I think is really fun. So if you're into role-playing, um, well, that's what we're doing now. So guys, uh, let me know your speculation, you know, about, uh, you know, what, what this, how this might tie in to Total War Warhammer 3, if it'll be used at all, it might not, but certain facts that we can piece together from this uh, single page, you know, the single entry about a single character, um, it, it can inform a bunch of other things, and you know, how this ties into the stuff we already know about Cathay from the sort of Total War Warhammer blogs uh, and the community um, articles. On, on Games Workshop's uh, blog post, you know, their blog as well. There's a lot of stuff that we can piece together, and I'm sure you guys have all your own theories, so I'd love to hear them in the comments. So uh, please let me know. Um, the best ones I may even I may even uh, elaborate on in the little video and credit you guys, because I'm sure you guys have come up with all kinds of wild speculations. So uh, let me know, and uh, I can't wait to read them. So guys, if you enjoyed this, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Oh, and also, go buy this stuff, okay? It's not sponsorship or anything, but I, you know, I don't know how comfortable I am publishing this. I don't know if I'm doing a bad, but it's a single page, so I figure it's okay. But make it up to Cubicle 7 by buying all their books. They've done a brilliant job with Total War, uh, not Total War, with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. The latest edition is so cool. If you want to learn more about the nitty gritty details of sort of, you know, the Empire and a bunch of other stuff besides, then it's a great place to start because, well, it's in print, which certainly helps, but they're great books, so go, go get them. Yeah. Laters.